Hello there. Today on Mental Detox with Dr. May, I will be talking about the fight or flight response. What does this generally mean? The fight or flight response is one of the tools your body uses to protect you from danger. So imagine if there's a snake in your room right now, what do you do? You say that you run, you freeze, or you want to attack the snake. But the truth is that most times you will run, that's the first thing that comes to your mind. You will not want to really attack the snake. But when you feel threatened, the fight or flight response is automatically triggered and several psychological changes prepare you to either confront like what I said earlier, flare from the place, and sometimes you are shocked. In such a terrible state, you freeze. The symptoms or the things you observe when you are in that state ranges from one end to another. You notice there's an increased heart rate, that means your heart is beating really fast. There's that feeling of dizziness or lightheadedness. Your body is shaking, your thoughts are racing. What do I do now? How do, where do I go? How do I move? You know, those type of things. Sometimes some people feel as if they want to vomit or feel like butterflies in their stomach. You will find out that in, inside your AC, whether in the room or in the car, you feel threatened you start sweating profusely. There's also what we call difficulty in concentrating, and your breathing will be rapid and shallow. Your muscles will become tense. How do you, this fight or flight response, how does it get triggered? I talked about snake in the room, sometimes an elephant. Imagine we don't really see elephant and then there's an elephant in the room. What do you do? Of course you love elephant, you want to just go and touch elephant. No, sometimes you can just run away because you just feel that ah, there shouldn't be elephant where I am. So even threats to emotional well-being, such as the fear of embarrassment before giving a presentation can trigger a fight or flight response. That's a good thing, right? You want to give a presentation, maybe it's only paid one, but you know, that, is a, that can trigger your fight or flight response. In these cases, the symptoms or how you feel often do more harm than good. What you, do you notice? An increased heart rate. You, see, your heart, you, you hear your heart beating. As with wherever you are, your heart beats always, but you don't hear it. But the moment you start hearing it, the medical word is palpitation, but for you it's an increase in the, you know, where your heart is beating. Sweating might help you escape from a bear, but they wouldn't do much to help you look cool and collected during a presentation. Because when you are doing a presentation, you are sweating profusely. You, start, you may start rambling. You may start you know, talking off point. So these are some of the things that can trigger a fight or a flight response. Is a fight or flight response bad? Now, let's get to this. Everyone will experience a fight or flight response at times to varying degrees. Usually it is natural, healthy, and not a problem. However, when the fight or flight response leads to excessive anger, you feel anxious, prolonged stress, or other problems, it might be a time to intervene. So your fight or flight response most time is normal. But when you feel those things I just listed, then it's time to intervene. How can I manage the fight or flight response? Because I know that's the next thing. Oh, I've been feeling this way. I've experienced this before. Now, how do you manage it? In addition to the fight or flight response, your body can also initiate an opposing relaxation response. Many symptoms of the relaxation response counteract, counteract the fight or flight, such as slower and deeper breathing, relaxed muscles, and a slower heart rate. The relaxation response can be triggered by using relaxation techniques. You want me to repeat them again? Such as deep breathing. I know we've talked about deep breathing here before, where you breathe in through your nose, 
like four, hold for four seconds. You, um, you hold it, breathe in through your nose for four seconds, hold for four seconds, and then breathe out through your mouth for four seconds. That's a very beautiful way for relaxation technique. And repeat it at least one to two minutes. Another way to have a good relaxation technique is progressive muscle relaxation, starting from the toes up to the head. Remember, whatever you do is progress, not perfection.